Okay, so we have uh, seen what an ordinary point is as far as a differential equation is concerned and when we are looking for a power series solution about an ordinary point and we have also seen that there is this theorem which tells us that if you are expanding about an ordinary point then you know convergence is guaranteed in, in some region of convergence about the point the ordinary point. So we will look at uh, you know you know an application of this right in uh, specifically for an initial value problem where you know initial conditions are given and we want to use the power series method to expand about an ordinary point. So we already you know did some kind of an expansion about an ordinary point as far as the Schrodinger equation was concerned but in this lecture we will look at how to do this for an initial value problem. Okay, so the theorem tells us that if you have an ordinary point then you know there is a convergent series so you can go ahead and uh, you know use the same standard technique so you write down the series then you compare coefficients you know at term by term and then write down a recursion relation and solve. So now suppose you have an initial value problem which means let us look at a concrete example. So you have something like x squared minus 1 d squared y by dx squared plus 3x dy by dx plus x times y equal to 0 and initial conditions are given to be you know at x equal to 0 y is 1 and the derivative at x equal to 0 is also given to be 1. So if we were to bring this to the standard form then we would have p1 of x is equal to 3x by x squared minus 1 and p2 of x is equal to xy divided uh, p2 of x would be just x by x squared minus 1. So y is you know is not part of this function. So x by x squared minus 1. So we see that both of these functions p1 and p2 have singularities at x is equal to plus or minus 1. At every other point both p1 of x and p2 of x are you know uh, uh, well behaved functions. So they have no difficulties other than these two points x is equal to plus 1 and x equal to minus 1. Therefore every point other than these two x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 1 is an ordinary point as far as this differential equation is concerned. And since for us in our case you know the initial conditions are specified at x equal to 0, it is natural for us to come up with a power series expansion about x equal to 0, right. So if we had had conditions about some other point then we could have, you know in some sense we could have shifted the origin to that point, right. So that is the technique and then you know differential equation will undergo a small change and then you know the method that we are adopting here will follow through. So what we would like to do is you know the theorem guarantees that since we are trying to expand about an ordinary point you know we will be able to find you know two linearly independent solutions it is a second order differential equation and so indeed so we look for a solution of this form y is equal to summation n going from 0 to infinity c and x to that. So it is very similar to the problem of the Schrodinger equation solution of the Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator problem which we did uh, you know some time ago. So differentiating we get dy by dx is summation you know n times c n x to the n minus 1 although summation still goes from 0 to infinity you can remove n equal to 0 term because you know n equal to 0 will kill it. So you can say that it starts from 1 and likewise when you take the second derivative you can say that the summation starts from n equal to 2 because the first two terms you know vanish one of them because of the factor n the other one will vanish because of the factor n minus 1. So plugging all these back in to the differential equation we have you know d squared y by dx squared is as is minus uh, so there is there is an x squared minus 1 right. So the x squared when it multiplies with this will give me x to the n minus 1. So I have expanded this so minus um, uh, so this this is just minus 1 times this as is I have written this one as it is. Then I have a plus 3 times x. So 3 times x times this will give me this becomes x to the n and n c n x to the n then I have plus plus y which I just uh, x times y. So I so I have x to the n plus 1 here summation over c n x to the n plus 1 equal to 0. So this is the same as saying I have you know the first time I write it as it is. The second term so in, instead of writing uh, the summation going from 2 to infinity I will you know what I have done here is to make a change of variable. If you wish I can write n minus 2 is equal to k 
so I have x to the k then and n is k plus 2 so c n will become c k plus 2 and then wherever I have n I must replace it with by k plus 2 so I have k plus 2 minus 1 that will be k plus k plus 1 times k plus 2 and then the sum will now go from uh, 0 to infinity because n minus 2 uh, is k so it will go, k will go from 0 to infinity but it's just a dummy variable which is getting summed over so in place of k I can put n back in and I have this second term then I have plus 3 times I write this term as it is n going from 1 to infinity n c n x to n then I have this term n 0, 0 to infinity I write it as it is c n x to the n plus 1 equal to 0. So now I will collect all these terms n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 only some of these have it so I will just pull out all those uh, you know uh, you know terms involving just n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 and then I want to write everything else together in one uh, you know sum from n equal to 2 all the way up to infinity I will just combine all of that and write it as x to the n. So, so also I notice that in fact this last term I could write it as c n minus 1 x to the n right so that is what I have here and that will start from n equal to 2. So, in other words I have put uh, you know and, and also I pull out one of these. Uh, so, you see that here it starts from uh, x to the so if I make n plus 1 as k I have x to the k and n is equal to k minus 1 and then uh, uh, k will start from 1 right and then the first time I, I bring it over here so that will be c 0 x which I have here and everybody uh, else is you know is absorbed into this second term. So, I can check that I have uh, n into n plus 2 well I mean I can also go ahead and do some simplifications here. So, I have n into n minus 1 plus uh, yeah, c n minus 1 is, is as is. So, I have uh, um, uh, n, n, n into n plus 2. So, I have um, so this is the first term and then I have a minus n plus 1 times n plus 2 c n plus 2 x and the second term indeed yeah so I have so I, I have combined this term this term with this plus 3. So, if I do this then I have n into n minus 1 plus 3 which becomes n into n plus 2. So, I will just combine the first and the third term. So, then I have n into n plus 2 c n minus n plus 1 times n plus 2 c n plus 2 plus c n minus 1 and then I, there is all this stuff involving these first two terms there is just minus 2 c c2 for it is the constant term and then I have also you know just pulled out all these stuff corresponding to just x right. So, you can verify that this is true and this whole thing must be equal to 0. So, now comes the key point of you know these arguments which is that term by term every coefficient must be 0 because this holds true for any x therefore I have minus 2 c 2 is 0 then I have c naught plus 3 c 1 minus c 3 is 0 and I also have this you know recurrence relation which I can get n into n plus 2 times c n minus n plus 1 times n plus 2 times c n plus 2 plus c n minus 1 must be equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 2 right. So, an equivalent way of writing down this you know this recursion relation is to write c n plus 2 in terms of c n and c n minus 1. So, I have n into n plus 2 times c n plus c n minus 1 divided by n plus 1 times n plus 2 for n greater than or equal to 2 that is c n plus 2 for you. So, we can obtain all the coefficients in terms of c naught and c 1. If we have c naught and c 1 then we put so we, we, we have already got c 2 to be 0. So, c 3 is c naught by 6 plus c 1 by 2 right. So, this is just the second equation and then after that c4 I can get using this. So, if I put n equal to 2 I will get c4 you can check that this will just turn out to be c1 over 12 and then c5 will turn out to be oh, so you have 8 c2 plus c1 by 12 but c2 is 0 right. So, therefore you will have c4 is dependent only on c1. So, c1 over 12 
and then I have uh, C phi. C phi will, will turn out to be a function of C naught and C1. So 1 over 8 C naught plus 3 by 8 C1. You can check this, right. So all I am doing is explicitly applying this recursion relation and then you find the higher in terms of the, the lower and then which in term is connected to its lower and so on. So in general, you will be able to write down, you know, all the terms are, are specified in because we have this recursion relation. So let us write down this explicitly for the first few terms all the way up to the fifth power. So then I have C naught plus C1 x plus C naught plus 3 C1 divided by 6 times x cube plus C1 over 12 x to the 4 plus C naught plus 3 C1 by 8 times x to the 5 plus so on which can be written as you know two separate terms one involving C naught and the other one involving C1. So I can think of these as two series one of them is C naught times 1 plus x cube by 6 plus x to the power 5 by 8 plus so on that is one series and the other one is C1 times x plus half x cube plus x to the 4 over 12 so on that is another series where C0 and C1 are free parameters. So in, in fact each of these is separately a solution because you can put C1 to be 0 for example and so this is also a, you know an independent solution and likewise the other series is also an independent solution. But in for this particular case, we are given initial condition. So in fact, we can work out C0 and C1. So y of x equal to 0, if I put x equal to 0, right, so we assume that there is convergence in some, uh, you know, radius of convergence about the origin, right. So we won't even worry about finding this radius of convergence, but it exists. But in fact, we can even, uh, you know, in this case, we can even tell what that radius is expected to be. So the rule is that if you, uh, you know, if you are expanding about an ordinary point, so and if one of them, uh, so you, you just simply look at these functions p1 of x and p2 of x, right. So since this is going to have a singularity at x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 1, so the radius of convergence, if you were to do a Taylor expansion of this function itself about the origin and this function itself about the origin, both of these Taylor expansions will have, you know, radii of convergence. So the smaller of these two radius, radii, at least that is going to be the radius of convergence for the tail, uh, the expansion, the power series expansion that you are looking at. But anyway, we are not going to, bo uh, you know, you know, go into all the details of this. So for as far as we are concerned, we are interested in, you know, using this machinery. So there exists some radius, which we do not need to bother about in the, for as far as this course is concerned or about how to compute this radius of convergence, but let us just keep in mind that it exists and within uh, this radius of convergence, so indeed if x equal to 0, you know all these terms will just go away and you are just left with C0. So y of x equal to 0 is just C0 which is given to us to be 1. So C0 itself is 1 and likewise if you take a derivative, you can you can do term by term differentiation, uh, you know because of this, uh, this, this convergent series, so then you have dy by dx is of x equal to 0 is also C1 and that is you know also given to be 1. So C1 is 1, C0 is 1. Thus the power series for this problem is just 1 plus x plus 2 by 3x cube plus 1 over, well I mean I am just plugging in here. I have 1 plus x plus you know 1 plus 3 by 6, that is 4 by 6, 2 by 3 x cube plus 1 over 12 x to the 4 and so on. So the key point is that we have explicitly seen that you know this for some one to concrete example that if you were to expand you know about some ordinary point then you know you get two independent solutions both of these are power series which go all the way up to infinity in this case right and they are convergent and they are they have each of them has their own radius of convergence which can be evaluated by there are techniques for evaluating the radius of convergence you know there are tests available which you might learn off in some other you know course for example, but as far as we are concerned, we are just we want to you know apply this technique you know with the theorem in the backdrop. We, we have been told that there is this theorem which guarantees that it is a convergent series and it is also going to have give you two independent solutions because it is an ordinary point as far as the differential equation is concerned. That is all for this lecture. Thank you.